is almost impossible. Faulkner had all the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, but it wasn't just the war. While he was serving overseas, his four-year-old nephew was murdered by a babysitter. A year after that, his sister died, and a few years later, his mother was gone as well. Faulkner used the bottle to take away his pain, and his life became a blur. I don't remember waking up. I remember walking. I remember walking, dragging all my stuff. When it gets cold and it feels like the end, there's no place to go, you know I won't give in. The purpose of tonight is that, you know, a lot of times our kids become invisible on the streets as a means of survival. And this is the one night a year where we gather as a community, where 800 people come together. Our kids attend this event so we can communicate to them, we know what you're going through, we're here for you, and we're invested in your future. I'm here for you, I'm here for you. Tonight we are here to pray for those that have found themselves. Malou, under the chin. Watch her antlers because she's got many points. She does indeed. And this and will be Malou's first year pulling Santa's sleigh. That's right. She's a can <laughs> candidate for Santa's sleigh. You're a candidate. Okay. okay. Some of the reindeer are naturals, but others need a bit more practice. Right. Whoa. 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 Hold on tight. <laughs> Just ready to take off flying. <laughs> and being a trainer takes lots of practice too. There we go. With all of the gear on board and a final goodbye, Dupree is ready to face his greatest challenge. I think I'm feeling excited. There's always a little butterflies right before you go, and that's a good thing. Those, butterfly, those butterflies keep you alive. Denali will be his home for the next month. Weather permitting, he'll be back at the dinner table by February with a one-of-a-kind tale to tell. Why are the roads so rough? The Department of Transportation says weather conditions over the past few days were perfect for creating this bumpy nightmare. Northern Knives has a new look. Uh, what would be the term? Uh, a strip club. And a new sign. I think it's like Augie's new house or new, I forget now. At least for the rest of the day. Yeah, cool. I like it. Movie magic. Fifth Avenue between Fairbanks and Eagle is being transformed into a strip club central for Friday night shoot for the frozen ground. Live girls, girls, new girls, uh, the whole full body massage thing. I was like, no way, I don't remember that next to Pete's Tobacco. Local construction workers, painters and prop makers do their best to recreate storefronts from the 1980s. Rustic, beat up, worn out. All these brand new signs are made to look old. Yeah, I mean those... We're made last week and look at them. Looks like cars have driven all over them. June 25th, 1950. War breaks out on the Korean Peninsula. Three years later, more than 37,000 U.S. soldiers are dead and 8,000 are missing. Nearly a million Korean civilians are killed or wounded. The legacy of that war remains at the demilitarized zone. A concrete slab in between those buildings there, that's the only thing that separates North and South Korea. A 17 by 5 inch slab of concrete is what has divided hundreds of thousands of families for six decades, including mine. My father, Hee Sun Jang, was born in Hwangindo province in 1946 in what is now North Korea. His father, my grandfather, was a wealthy landowner and targeted by communist forces for imprisonment or worse. My grandparents had to flee with my father who was four years old at the time. As they crossed the 38th parallel onto the south, they were forced to leave behind their three daughters. My grandparents passed away decades later, heartbroken, not knowing whether their daughters were dead or alive. My father eventually met my mother in Busan and had four children, three girls and a boy, and moved out of Korea to Canada, then to the U.S., but not knowing what happened to his sisters haunts him to this day. Pan Moon what Koreans call the DMZ, is a reminder for my father and the hundreds of thousands of other Koreans. It's not just a country, but families who remain divided. Wake up to a toy. It's better than waking up to a pair of socks. <laughs> we are getting the Marines set up so that they can give lots of toys to kids. Kind of beefing up our toy supply there at the 
Reserve Center with the Toys for Tots. Something that in the Marine Corps we do nationwide every year. Helping the kids so they can have a Christmas. All right, so get a couple of these. How about this? I um, think of like stuff that I like. Ooh, that one's good. And then I think that they might like it too. Probably get a couple of those. That'd be pretty cool. Here. We're able to come out here and spend a lot of money for them. Probably have close to like 50 carts <laughs> or so. So I don't know, it's a lot. And this is just all volunteer work. Just uh, seeing the looks on the kids' faces when we go to the collection point is worth it. It's probably not going to be enough. It's a lot, but we have a long way to go. Oh, Dad, let's get some um, car Legos. Oh, this, there's a blue one. I think it needs batteries. There are kids that need presents at Christmas, and a lot of times their parents can't afford to give them what they would like. I grew up real poor. I grew up in New Orleans. We didn't have a lot, but you know, my dad always somehow managed. And if I can help in the family manage, it's all the worth, 